the chances are good that this quickie is bad. The prosecutor's fallacy is when someone points to the unlikeliness of something happening and concluding that it must be because of something nefarious. It gets its name from a common tactic from prosecutors. The defendant has all of this supposed evidence against him. None of it is conclusive, but what are the chances this evidence would be there if he's not guilty? He must be the unluckiest guy in the world. It's a form of argument from ignorance, as well as confirmation bias. Everyone has something about them that looks suspicious, even if they're completely innocent. And it stands to reason that someone who just by chance happens to have, completely innocently, a few more suspicious things about him would be the one who's more likely to get arrested. You need to weigh it against the chances of the person committing the crime to begin with. What set of evidence could be made against other people that's just as unlikely? Sally Clark is a woman wrongfully convicted of murdering her two sons in 1999. She was exonerated and released in 2003 when it was determined they had died from SIDS. But she had serious psychological problems resulting from the experience and died from alcohol poisoning in 2007. She was convicted in large part because the prosecutor had an expert witness who argued that the chances of someone having two children die of SIDS is 1 in 73 million. Despite the fact that this is a known fallacy, this was not only allowed, but upheld in an October 2000 appeal. The Royal Statistical Society says that this is an absolute misuse of statistics. If there's any validity to this 1 in 73 million figure at all, it's only valid in comparison to the likelihood of competing explanations as well as the prior probability of Clark's innocence. Double SIDS is rare. Double infant homicide by a parent is much rarer. Another example is Dwayne Jackson who served four years for an armed robbery. The DNA was a partial match and the probability of this match happening randomly was 1 in 17 billion. There are only 7 billion people on the planet, therefore it must be him. Turns out the real criminal was Jackson's cousin, which is why the DNA was so similar. This prompted a reanalysis of 200 cases. It's not even trying to make a case on circumstantial evidence. It's trying to get people to believe a circumstantial case is there when it just isn't. So keep this fallacy in mind, especially if you're ever on a jury.